what they eat in the shrimp creole. Beautiful trout. Rig hopping today. Got some school trout on these rigs out here in Lake Bourne. Right out, out here in the middle of the summer. Gonna go with the old trusty shrimp creole. Maybe throw a little uh, lemon head. Got some shrimp in the area. Some little brown shrimp in Lake Bourne. Try to imitate that color pattern. See how many trout we can catch out here. All right, depending on the rig and the situation and each, uh, each wellhead that we fish out here, is different you know oh there he is didn't even let it get to the bottom nice fish this one feels pretty decent let me get this in and i'll go over what we were going to talk about there where you at baby oh yeah there's a good one that's, a good one. that's no schoolie that's no schoolie huh pups i'll throw it right back out there Put a fresh shrimp creole on. That one got torn up a little bit. Again, I got this on them screw locks. I've really found myself using these more than anything, especially as we get into the summer months. Soft plastics tend to tear up a little bit more, a little bit easier. So that screw lock will help you get a few more fish before the lure uh, actually tears up. But, Let's go back over. Each wellhead is a little bit different in its own. And that's the only way you're gonna figure that out is just simply trial and error. Some wellheads you will find that more of your bites come real tight to the rig. Some wellheads you'll find there might be a sweet spot off the rig somewhere. When that's the case, when you find your bites are off the rig, that usually means that there was a a piece of a rig of the rig there or maybe another small rig right next to it at some point in time and they pulled it up and what they do with these well heads is in order to keep everything in the ground nice and stable they'll line it with shells on the bottom or something hard on the bottom to keep keep it in place better and a lot of times if those shells or whatever it is down there that makes the bottom hard, that's more important than the actual structure to wellhead itself. Now don't get me wrong, some of these wellheads I find, if I really keep that lure close to the structure that you can visually see, that's also the sweet spot. So the bottom line is you wanna be able, you wanna make a lap around them with the trolling motor, make a lot of fan cast, tight to the rig, off the rig, so on and so forth and try to find that zone that those fish want to be in. And then wherever you figure it out that day, mark it in your brain and remember, because that's probably the hot spot for that rig each time it comes out here, each time you come out here. Oh, that one just got off at the boat. He was a keeper, not by a lot, but definitely a keeper. And again, we're just doing your basic poncha train pop. It's anywhere from six to 11 feet on these rigs, depending on which one you fish. The shallower the rig, the lighter jig head you want to use. Oh, missed another one. That one looked a little short. So five sixteenths, if the tide's nice and relaxed, if the wind's kind of mellow, that's what I would recommend. Three eighths, if it's a little bit choppier or the, or the tide's kind of ripping. If it's totally flat out here, you could get away with a quarter ounce. Right now it's pretty, pretty nice conditions. The best part is these real thick clouds we had this morning, keeping that sun off of us, keeping that heat down. another nice one I'm missing these fish back to back last last two good ones or three good ones I had hooked 
miss them. All right, when you're fishing these wellheads that we have out here in Bourne, it's pretty rare that you're gonna pull up to one and knock out 50 real quick off of one wellhead. It's, you know, they're sitting like the rigs in Breton Sound and other places that have just tremendous amounts of fish, but you can certainly catch 50 trout out here, but you typically gotta bounce around and work for them. You might fish two with nothing, go to the next one four, go to the next one, get on a run of 20, go to the next one two or three, and there's enough wellheads to keep bouncing around out here and knocking off two or three to 10. I'd say 10's about the average. It's a way you can keep bouncing around and make it a box. And like we've discussed in some previous episodes, like this wellhead I'm on here, we've probably had a good six or seven hooked already, landed a couple good ones, and it's starting to play out some, but leave it alone fish a couple wellheads around it and then come back to it in about an hour and those fish will group up again you might pull another three or four off of there so you just got to keep moving around and you know nothing really in this estuary comes all that easily you gotta you gotta fish for them out here well, we got one here though got a fish for long see if we can actually get one in the boat there we go. Oh, a little on a pup. It's been, I've, I've done made two laps around this wellhead. All of the bites are coming right by this little concrete cylinder. So this is pretty obvious, the sweet spot here. I've only fished this particular wellhead two or three times in my life. But they all can be good. There's three or four, maybe five outside the Wrigley's. That's where we started this morning was on the L&N train bridge. And then you got another four or five off of Alligator Point. And then if you cross Lake Bourne, you know, if you go to the Biloxi Marsh side, you got two or three more over there. Then those are really good as you're getting closer to that saltier water. The only thing is with me and these little boats, I typically stay on the western side of Bourne catch what I can on this side. Get on up here, ready? Get on up here. All right, so we moved from that, that was kind of like a two-piece rig there with some cement structure, a metal structure on one side with that cylinder and then a group of pylons off to the side. And now this type of rig that we're fishing now, we call this a little white chair rig. These are, this is probably more often than not the type of rig that you see out here in Bourne are these little white ones. And, you know, you might have your favorite. Oh, there he is. Oh, what we got here? Little, little rascal trout. And a lot of these rigs, they get pulled up every few years or so. You might have a rig that you've really been one of your favorites for a long time. You gotta show up the next summer and they're gone. But the time of the year that these rigs are effective, I would say April, May, June are probably the best. As you get into July, they'll still be here, but you really gotta get that daylight start. August, it starts playing out. But that middle of the summer, May, June, July, that's probably your best time. There's quite a few on here too. I've had a bite every cast. But a lot of these rigs this year in particular, you gotta weed through the throwbacks a little bit. You know, this used to be nothing but two and three pounders out here, but now that the seems like the estuary is a little bit fresher, more fresh that uh you know, you get some smaller fish, but nevertheless, this is one of our favorite things to fish. Now, we started on Ellen in this morning. Todd was falling. We were kind of late. Talked to some friends over there where they did bite early that morning. And anytime you're coming through Ellen in with a fallen tide, I highly recommend starting it, starting there and giving it at least a good look. Cause when you do run into them there, there really can be some really nice trout under there. But we didn't do nothing, came out to these rigs and starting to 
put a few fish in the boat here now. Pups. Boy, he's got that shrimp creole choke down his throat. That's how you want him to eat it. All the way down the mouth. Perfect hook set right out the corner. That fish wasn't coming off. That's what we're looking. That's a that's what this is what we're looking for right here. Perfect size fish, perfect eating size, those 14 inches. You know, you'll get them, you'll see a couple three pounders here and there out here, but this is the size, this is what they eat in the shrimp creole. Beautiful trout. A few more off of this white chair rig. No, we pretty much, I just wanted to get breakfast and make a video. We got that done. So instead of running all over the world, we're gonna just leave this rig. We're gonna go right back to the one we just fished, which is only a couple hundred yards away. I let those hopefully settle down enough to pull another fish or two off of there. We know exactly where those fish are, where they're wanting to hang out. So we pull another one off, close this video out. Maybe try another one either today or the next day. shrimp creole has been good to us today go ahead and close the video out here here's the wellhead again we knew exactly where those fish were hanging out so i wanted to stop by try to pull off a couple more caught some little small ones right when uh right when we pulled up and then came on the front side of it Got this good one here. Got plenty enough for what we were trying to do today. Show you guys just how effective these rigs and leg born are. I hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you learned some stuff. So how effective lake born can be. We only fished two rigs, didn't spend much time. Shrimp Creole on the golden eye screw lock jig head. That was our combination today. That'll be in your monthly bait box. Make sure to subscribe to that. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out all of our rig hopping episodes out here. We got plenty of them. And until next time, guys, good fishing.